Hello everybody and welcome to Lesson 10 of the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel Video Tutorial Series. I'm Boz. I'm Ben. What's going on today, man? Besides being another beautiful day, yeah. I can just I can feel your smile through the microphone. You are so excited for today's lesson. Well, it's one of those things we're going to be looking at data tables, right? The goals are data tables, the goal seek feature, and then some color scales within conditional formatting. Sometimes you remember where you are when things happen. I still remember it was the fall of 2007 when I learned about data tables, and uh, I think they literally changed my life. So <laughs> Changed your life. You got married, you had kids, and you learned about data tables. That's right. <laughs> and so you'll see on, on our homepage here, there's not any shortcuts necessarily. You can always get there with a hot keys, but mostly today is just kind of talking to you about here are some really cool, really powerful tools in Excel. We want you to be aware of them and have just a little bit of experience by the end of this video. All right, so I will go to our template here. Now, what I will say on this one, so it, this is all going to revolve around at various stock prices and various dividend payments on a per share basis. What is um, our dividend yield going to be? And we're going to you know, show you how we can use some data tables uh, to com uh, compute that regardless of the inputs. Um, this kind of matches up. Uh, this is lesson 10. It matches up with kind of the 10th lesson in a financial accounting course. That's what we're trying to match it to is the stockholder equity chapter. Now, I purposely, I was in charge of creating this one, and this was basically a gift for Ben because Ben, the dividend yield ratio, come on, man. I appreciate that. It's definitely my top five all-time ratios, uh, partially because I just like to bring it up when it, on our podcast, and it <laughs> yes. gets you all fired up, too. Ben loves the dividend yield, so this is all for him, man. Um, Combining two top, well, thank you so much, boss. Yes, absolutely. All right, so we can see um, you know, right now that we're computing dividend a yield as uh, dividends divided by the stock price. But what if we change the dividend amount? How would that change the dividend yield? Now, this one is going to be pretty easy. The, the next couple will get a little bit more complex for you. So in this situation, what I want to make sure when I'm going to do a data table, I want it to give me my dividend yield, that percentage at each of these levels of dividend payouts. So I am going to uh, go equals right here. This is very important to put this in the right spot equals and then I will go click on that dividend yield percentage. So now that I've got it in that right spot, I will highlight this range and you have to be very specific in highlighting this range. And now that I've done that, I will go to data over to the what if analysis and down to the data table. Do you usually call it a data table or what do you usually I would, say? I would usually call this a sensitivity analysis yep. and I think that's probably one of the older versions yeah. of the office suite yeah. and now they probably moved it to a, a data table. Yeah. So if you ever hear sensitivity analysis, the same thing. So that's how we access it is data table right here. So what do you think now, Ben? I've got, I don't have much, I don't have many options, right? I've got a row input cell. I've got a column input cell. I got to choose one of them and I got to click on something. What should I put so, here? So when this says row input cell, and I'm asking you this because students, I feel like confuse this yeah. all the time. So when it says row input cell, does that mean that's the value that you want in each of your rows? Or is that column input cell? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, it's a great question. I always have to stop and think about it. But if it says row input cell, that means that the input that could be changing is in a row. And then if it says column input cell, it means that the inputs that are changing are in a column. That's All right. It. So what's changing in this case is going to be the column, the yep. dollar amount of the dividends. So we want the column input cell in this yep. case. So I click column input cell. I'll go ahead and I'll click on the $3. Now I'll hit OK, and I've got my new percentages in there. All right, so I will go drag and uh, highlight that. And we've got a shortcut for percentages that, uh, I don't know, we teach them the shortcut percentages. That, that's coming up in that, a couple of lessons here. Yeah, I don't want to give it away. I think that's in lesson 12. They're going to have to come back. They have to earn that one. All right, so then <laughs> I just go. put up the percentage in and increase a decimal once. Now that, you know, that, that's not huge value add right there. But and, usually you're not using this in a very simple spreadsheet like this. It's usually pretty complex yep. with a lot of different, different, I guess, things moving your output could be going up or down. So exactly. it's just a nice way to start. It's just not as round. Or like if the stock price was $107.38 as an example. You know, now it's a little bit more interesting, right? Because we couldn't have done all that math in our head. All right, now let's go down to example two. This one is also you know, a little bit more straightforward, but uh, we're just gonna be doing the inputs are in a row as compared to in a column. Oh. So very, 
that's the one thing about data tables is they take some getting used to because you have to be in this exact spot. And if you are not, this is not going to work. So you've got to be in A17 right now going to data. And then, oops, I, I probably should get, well, no, I'm sorry. I got to be in A17 and I do the, uh, do the equals and now go up to what I'm trying to compute. I'm trying to compute a dividend yield based on these different inputs of stock price. All right. Now I have to highlight this exact range, data, what if analysis, data table, what do you think I do now, Ben? Row input cell or column input cell? So repeating what you just said a little bit to help us learn it here, what's changing is actually listed in that row. Row six is what's changing. So we're going to do a row input cell for this one. Absolutely. So row input cell, I click right there. And then what that represents is going to be the stock price. So I want you to click on the 100. There we go. Yep, and I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I have different yield percentages, dividend yields, based on different amount of future stock prices. All right, so I will go ahead and put percentages in there. And now I can just see if I, if I, and this is, I keep my dividend at three bucks per share, but if the stock price is different, how is the dividend yield gonna change? So instead of having to do that, five different times you mm -hmm. just do the data table and it calculates it all for you well, are you limited to five there could you do more if you wanted do to millions if, if excel goes that long <laughs> however long you want it to be but really how i use this is you know you know frequently in the business world we, we the inputs are not exact right they're kind of unknown the stock price is kind of unknown so i would um you know give my manager kind of my base case solution, but then say, hey, the unknown is the stock price. So here's what our yield's gonna be at these various stock prices, just so you have that information. I wanted to troubleshoot. And what would be, in either of these two examples right now, a very common thing that people would mess up? And I just, if you can think of things, and you know, why wouldn't uh, the, this data table or sensitivity analysis work? What could people mess up here? I think the Biggest thing that I see being messed up is when you're doing the data table, mm -hmm. putting it in the wrong input cell. So you're not using yep. the row input cell or the column yep. input yep. cell. Exactly. They, they do the wrong one. And I mean, we, we could do it. We won't. But it's, you would just get nonsensical information in there. Mm -hmm. yep. Otherwise, not remembering to link the 3% in this case to the dividend yield. I see people just type in 3%. Yep. And it grinds my teeth a little bit. <laughs> so here's where Ben is going with this one. So this 3% right here, if you just typed that in, that messes all this up, right? Because now it's not linking. What Excel is trying to do, and I'll undo that with a control Z, is it's trying to recompute this 3% substituting in these numbers in exchange for the three, all right? So we can't hard key this. We also cannot hard key this one right here at 3%. That has now messed those up below. So those are some common pitfalls. And frankly, a lot of people do make those mistakes until they get used to us. Once you get it down, you know, then you're golden and you're good for life. You're golden. Your data tables are golden. <laughs> yes. All right. Example three. So this is the one I, you know, I, this one has probably the most value because you have two inputs that are not as easy to compute. So you're kind of like, well, what is our dividend yield going to be at different levels of dividend payouts, anywhere between a buck and five bucks, and at different potential share prices for next year? So here, it's in this very specific cell I7 that we have to link to the 3%. You know, Ben cautioned you, don't just type in the 3%. That, that would give you um, a bad result. This wouldn't work. So link to that 3%. And now we highlight this whole range right there. I mean, this is my favorite one to do of the three, right? This is where it's fun. I think this is the one that you see most common too, because yeah. you're looking at two different variables, the stock price and the dividends per share. What is your dividend yield going to be? So it's not just five scenarios. It's not just five other. You can't add them together for 10. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 25 20. different scenarios in just one second. So literally, if, yeah, if, if we knew that there was five potential inputs for each of these two things and our manager asked us at you know at different ranges and we didn't use this we'd i don't know would we print off 25 different spreadsheets or sit in front of them and do it 25 different times right that's what we would have to do unless we had a tool like this data what if analysis same thing data table same thing here right now row input cell which one should i put in here again now ben row that would be the stock cell. price stock price into the row input cell column input cell that would be dividends per share the thank you for highlighting those by the way <laughs> it's always nice to highlight your yeah. input cells so that, yeah. people know what you're using in your tables well most other things on the spreadsheet yeah are linked so now what we have here oh did i mess something up Oh, I'd let, okay, I'd, I'd hard keyed them this before from, from trying to show the common pitfalls, all right? So 
I, I did not try to do this, but this is a good example of how that would be messed up right there. So in order to fix that, remember, this is a formula. So this has to be a formula right here. Otherwise, it won't work. All right, so there we have it as a formula. Now it's working. I'll highlight all of these. I'll go back to home. I'll put in the parent, uh, percentage. I'll do one decimal in there, and I've got my result. What do you think? Pretty cool. I like this because it's, it allows you to quickly analyze it, and it, it makes sense, too. If I have a lower stock price with a higher dividends per share, that's going to drive up the highest yield. And so on the bottom left of your table, you see that's our highest amount, 6.3%. Yep. So this is cool. This is an exact thing that you'd walk into your manager's office with and say, yeah, I don't know the inputs for sure, but here's the result. There is, there is one thing here. I'm not really a numbers guy. Personally, yeah. I'm yeah. not much of a numbers guy. Could we add some color to this? Just to make it pop a little like bit Like a little more. bit of a heat map, if you want to think about that. The best one, Ooh. I want it to be green. Yeah. And the least best one, I want it to be red. Sure, sure. All right. So that's, um, we, we, yes, we're absolutely going to do that. Let's do it via, via conditional formatting. And within conditional formatting, we have a lot of different options here. We could highlight, uh, you know, certain, we could highlight certain cells. We could highlight the best results, the worst results. Um, I don't use data bars a lot, but color scales, I think, is what we really want to use here. And there's a variety of those. We can even see this first one, the green uh, actually goes to the best results, the red to the worst. You know, we could experiment with all sorts of color scales here, but really green best, red worst, green go, red stop, think of a stoplight. I think that's what I'm gonna want. So yeah, it pops right now. Our best results are in green, our worst results are in red. So Look in, at that, that's seriously. pretty. Like walk into your manager's office with this and they're probably gonna go, wow, how long did this take you? You're wasting time. You're gonna tell them, yeah, it took me like a minute. Right? And they're going to think you're so, so cool. That's but, pretty sweet, boss. They are going to think you're so, so oh, cool. I, I get jacked up. Now, the last thing we want to show you, it, it's actually a really cool feature. I don't use it a whole lot, but it is the goal seek feature. All right. And as far as the goal seek feature is concerned, let's just change and let's just say your stock price is something like, I don't know, $137.13. And, and we want to get a dividend yield of exactly 3% per share. All right. Now... We could, of course, just do some math formula in here to, in, order, in order to get this one. Guess and check, though, right? Yeah, we, we could do some guess and check. Give me some guesses, Ben. Uh, four bucks. Yeah, four bucks. All right, we're close. All right, 450. 450. Oh, you're a little Too high. Too far. 420. 420. Oh, close. 417. 417. No, no, it's interesting. You know, we think that Ben's on there, but if we expand the decimal, he's still not there. All right, 417.4. <laughs> we, we, we could, right? So we could do that. The other way we could do this is the goal seek feature. So let's say that this is our stock price. You know, what dividend is going to give us exactly a 3% dividend yield? We get there by going data, back to what if analysis, the goal seek feature. You want to uh, take me through this one? So yeah, this one is a lot of fun. You're yeah. right that I don't use it a ton. I wish but we could use it more. It's, it's so well, fun. you can. Like sometimes when you're doing valuations. So if I want to have a valuation of a company of 137 bucks per share, mm -hmm. what does revenue growth need to be? And so yeah. then it does a goal seek and it sets the stock price to what you want it to be yeah. by changing the revenue growth. But in this case, set sell. We're going to use dividend yield. So D3 in that case. Mm -hmm. We want it to be. So in the next box, two value. 3.0%. This is the one just going to be hard keyed in. Mm -hmm. So you want it to be 3%. And what you're going to do to change that is change cell D2, the dividends per share. And so what Excel does, it basically what you and I were just doing with the guessing, just way faster and way more precise. So if you hit OK here mm -hmm. and it says, hey, it got the value, found a solution. So hit OK. And I was right, 417. <laughs> <laughs> ben says he was right. It's, you know, it's an interesting one. Technically, like when we did this before with 417, that's cool that that worked out that we had planned that. Um, there is, oh, it's exactly 417 there. I w and that probably is the exact math in that situation as well. So that uh, is, is why that one ended up working. But uh, it's just a quicker way to get there than the guess and check. Um, cool. So yeah, that just kind of changes it. And uh, if you didn't want it, you could change it back. Well, I think that's what I mainly wanted to cover with these, unless you have yeah, anything else on Yeah, a few there. different types of data tables, goal seek, conditional formatting with some color there. 
That's a, that's a pretty good day. All right. Use it. People will think you're cool. Uh, well, that's what we got today. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Lesson 10 of our Excel tutorial series. We'll be back next time with Lesson 11. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.